rivalry, the act of competing for the same thing against another person, which could also result into conflict with your rival, the person you compete against. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's just all sorts of different parts of rivalry or all sorts of different rivals, both in real life and in fiction, just in general. For example, Goku versus Vegeta. I mean, this rivalry is kind of obvious. I mean, it's been going on for years and it's a staple to many of us. And then obviously, of course, you got Jotaro versus Dio, Deku versus Bakugo, Naruto versus Sasuke, Batman versus Superman. Well, I don't know if you want to call this a rivalry, but um, I'll just let you guys decide on that. And you even got Ash and Gary, one of the most classic rivalries of all time. Well, Ash, you snooze, you lose, and you're way behind right from the start. I got a Pokemon and you don't. You got your first Pokemon? That's right, loser, and it's right inside this Pokeball. God, I want to punch Gary in the face so bad for saying that. But even so, ladies and gentlemen, despite the fact that there are many rivals in anime, in video games, there are tons of rivalries that go on throughout the series. And today, I am going to be making my top 10 list on my top 10 rivalries of all time within video game history. Now, what exactly do I uh, think of when I think of rivals in video games? Well, it's got obviously got to be both characters competing against each other for each other's strength, or if there's some like deep conflicts between each other, and basically just having both characters fighting over something like throughout the years, like even if it's the main focus of the game, or when there's like some promotional art or stuff that goes on with the rivalries. I think you guys get the idea, but anyways, I just want to go ahead and get started, so yeah, there aren't any rules for this list, but we will be counting one rivalry per uh, franchise, unless it's in the honorable mentions, because there are other rivalries that I wanted to talk about, but yeah, without further ado, let's get into this action, shall we? Number 10, Mario vs. Wario. This is by far one of the most classic video game rivalries. Especially like when Nintendo decided to create a rival for their very own uh, character. Now, um, wh what makes this rivalry so iconic is that um, the fact that Mario is just this very cool, awesome, lovable guy that you just love to hang out with. Meanwhile, Wario is the exact opposite of Mario because he's just uh, very rude, greedy, loves money a lot and he's basically evil, and he just wants to ruin Mario's life in every way, shape, or form by any means necessary. And it's kind of hard to see why. I mean, he was the main villain of one of Mario's games, after all. But this rivalry has been so iconic. Mario and Wario have been competing against each other. But even though Wario's behavior hasn't changed that much, he does tend to respect Mario to some degrees. But if you want to talk about one of their biggest rivalries, like, it's got to be in the comics themselves. Now, the comics are obviously not canon to the source, but it's, rum it's sort of rumored that, like, Wario has been bullied by Mario when they were kids, especially, like, um, like, um, dur during their childhood. Like, it was so weird. That's why he wanted revenge on Mario, as shown in the comics, but... I can see why, but yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. Number 9, Mega Man and Base. Okay, so even though there aren't that many rivalries in the Mega Man franchise, I think the one rivalry that stands out to me the most is definitely between Mega Man and Base. Mega Man is the super fighting robot that we all know and love as him to be. He's a guy who loves to fight for justice. Base, on the other hand, is the exact opposite, considering the fact that he was created by Mega Man's arch nemesis and the old friend of Dr. Light. Not to mention that Base's whole goal, he doesn't care about, like, 
He doesn't really care about world domination, just like Wily. He does follow orders to some degree, but he mostly disobeys him because all he cares about is being the strongest robot and being number one. And he always competes with Mega Man because he was designed to be better than Mega Man in every way, shape, or form. And I could definitely see that. That's why in most games he's so competitive and that's why he's always picking fights with Mega Man. And it's pretty cool how they're kind of like the polar opposites of each other. They even both have, even their dogs are a uh, polar opposite. Like, uh, Treble is basically the opposite of Rush. And it's so cool. And it's even more cool when you see in Mega Man 7, they use their super adapters to fight against each other. And the battle is just amazing. But overall, I think that's all I have to say about this rivalry. It's just so iconic. Number 8. Kyo Kusanagi vs. Iori Yagami Alright, so I'm just gonna give you a quick heads up everybody. I'm not a big fan of the King of Fighters games. I mean, the King of Fighters games are good, don't get me wrong, and I like to play these games like any day. It's just I'm not too big of a fan and too invested in the franchise. I mean, there are lovable characters that I just like in this game, and Kyo and Iori are exactly one of those characters. Plus, not to mention that Kyo and Iori's rivalry are so uh, iconic because both characters come from uh, rivaled clans from like back in the day, and they both uh, compete in e compete with each other in like the King of Fighters tournament. I mean. Kyo is always on his team, Team Heroes, or Team uh, Japan, and Iori is on Team Rivals, which is meant to compete with uh, Kyo, of course. And there are occasional times where when they're not competing or fighting against each other in the King of Fighters games, there are times when they would team up with each other with Chizuru in Team Secret Treasures when there's bigger threats like Orochi and stuff. But that's neither here or there. The point is their rivalry is just so iconic. Like, even though Iori um, does... T I don't know what his relationship with uh, Kyo is. Like, I don't know if he hates him or not. But I guess you could say he does respect him to some degree. But yeah, that's all I have to say about this one. This is a really amazing rivalry. Number 7. Dimitri versus Morrigan. Man, Darkstalkers barely has any characters competing with each other for, like, anything. Like, I know that there aren't too many rivalries in the franchise, considering that it only had three games. Unfortunately, there's only one rivalry in this franchise, and, I mean, it's still a good rivalry nonetheless. Dimitri versus Morrigan. What makes these two rivals is just perfect. Dimitri is a vampire who's more sophisticated and more serious, and all he cares about is like taking over the land of Makai because he believes it's his rightful thing. Morgan, on the other hand, she's the heir to the throne because her father Belial was the original ruler, but despite all that, she doesn't really care about ruling the land all that much because she's mostly just seeking some fun and excitement in her life. But she does tend to compete with Dimitri and try to keep the throne from him because I don't know why. Does she like not want him to rule over the land? Well, I don't even know uh, what's the point or what's like the secret behind it. But there are occasional times when they do have respect for each other for their strength. Despite the fact that Dimitri is a bit of a wet blanket and Morrigan's more fun and more... Uh, I don't know what to describe it, but yeah, this is a very good rivalry nonetheless. Number 6, Hyde Keto versus Seth the Assassin. Now this is of course one of my favorite rivalries in Undernight in Birth. In, in fact, it's probably uh, the best rivalry in the entire game, just in general. Now what makes this so iconic is that you got Hyde Keto, this young man who basically just is a high school student that becomes an in-birth and now he's set on this big mission to save Lene and stop Hilda from becoming a rebirth and destroying the whole world. And meanwhile, Seth, I don't know what his motivation is, but all I know is that he wants to stop 
Hilda too, but he's an assassin and he'll stop anyone that gets in his way, including Hyde. And he competes with him because he doesn't trust him for wielding the insulator, the blade that's meant to like, uh, that's supposed to like stop the night or whatever it's supposed to be called in Under Night In Birth. And basically, he thinks that uh, Hyde is too inexperienced and too, um, well, not worthy enough to protect Lene and all that stuff. Still, he does have a somewhat mysterious relationship with Lene, and even though Hyde just met her, um, he, he does care so much for her and, and protects her, unlike Seth, who's trying to stop her. Um, and these two, um, competing against each other, it's just, uh, so cool, like, seeing them as polar opposites, and, I mean, polar opposite rivalries are just so cool, and there's even more polar opposite rivalries that'll be shown, uh, further into the list. And not to mention the music that plays in the background, Mutual Feelings. This is the best rival theme for Hyde and Seth, uh, better yet, because... Whenever I listen to this theme, this totally feels like a perfect rival theme between the two of them. And yeah, that's all I have to say. This is just so cool. Number 5. Sonic the Hedgehog vs. Shadow the Hedgehog Sonic Adventure 2, the best game in the series. Man, I will never forget the introduction of Shadow the Hedgehog. Ever since his debut, a lot of people consider this to be the best Sonic rivalry there is. And I kind of agree, this is honestly one of the best rivalries uh, ever. Like, you got Sonic, who is basically this carefree character with a smart attitude, just loves to protect the world and his friends from evil, and doing whatever he can to like help those in need. And meanwhile, you also got Shadow, who is like the opposite of Sonic. He's more serious. Um, he's more of a character that just is more focused on his mission. Like in all of Sonic Adventure 2, he just focused on revenge and stuff. And not much needs to be said about uh, Shadow other than like in further games, like despite the fact that he's gotten over his revenge and all that stuff, he does tend to be alone and do things on his own because, like, he believes that it could be done because he can't stand Sonic's, well, immaturity and stuff. But there is one thing that he does respect Sonic for, and that is his strength and their speed, which is why they compete with each other as shown in future games. And plus, the battle themes between Sonic and Shadow is just so cool, like, for true story, the final boss theme uh, for both of them in Sonic Adventure 2 is hands down one of uh, the greatest themes that ever played. The Sonic Generations version is just so cool. Speaking of Sonic Generations, I think that is, in my opinion, the best uh, incarnation of Sonic and Shadow's fight, if you think about it. And yeah, not much needs to be said about this. Yeah, Sonic vs. Shadow, definitely the best. Number 4, Dante vs. Virgil. This is a rivalry that just screams rivals. Exactly um, how you picture when you think of video game rivalries. And since they're both polar opposites of each other, because you got Dante, who is this lovable, party-loving dude, who is also a demon hunter, and because he's half human, half demon, he's more on his humanity side. Meanwhile, v Virgil... He's more of a very serious character who wants more power, wants to rule the world with his strength, and he, despite being uh, Dante's brother and half human, half demon, he's more on his demon side. And unlike Dante, who uses all sorts of weapons, like his sword and a bunch of guns and weapons that he has, Virgil only needs his swords and some of his uh, gauntlets that he has. He doesn't use guns because he claims them to be dishonorable weapons, which is exactly the opposite of what Dante would do. He would definitely use guns in a situation. And yeah, thus the rivalry between Dante and Virgil, two brothers competing each other for each other. Like Virgil wants to like um, fight Dante for his strength. And Dante just wants to put an end to his uh, brother's conflict because, well, 
because he's uh, basically endangering everyone and all that stuff. And plus, what makes the rivalry even cool is that the way they bounce off of each other, like their personality and stuff, and the way they act towards one another, it just really feels so surreal. Even in Devil May Cry 5 with the rival theme, uh, what was it, uh, Bury the Lights? Well, even though that's Virgil's theme, I consider it to be a, a nice rival theme to Dante and Virgil. But, yeah, who am I to judge? Number three, Ragna the Blood Edge versus Jin Kisaragi. Now, this is easily one of my top three most favorite rivalries of all time. And why exactly is that? Well, you see, Ragna and Jin have a lot in common. They're both brothers. Well, that one's kind of obvious. But they're also main characters and anti-heroes. Because unlike Noelle, who out of all the three main characters is more heroic than the both of them, these two have both different qualities that make them anti-heroes in a different way. Because Ragna, even though he's a, a sort of a hero, he starts out as this angry dude who just wants to destroy everything, only to become anime Bruce Campbell. Yes, I just compared Ragna to Bruce Campbell. And yes, I did steal this joke from Thorgy. Don't sue me. Um, but yeah. So, he's basically also a criminal, too. Meanwhile, Jin, he works for the uh, military academy that is hunting down criminals like Ragna. But even though he is uh, considered to be the hero and he has the title Hero of Ikaraga, he isn't really much of a hero because he's very much of a jerk to everybody he meets, calling them garbage and trash. And when he's around his brother, he's not after him because of him being a criminal. He has issues with him, and he's more chaotic and more evilish than you think. But there are occasional times where they would put their differences aside and stop the bigger threats, but in the end, they still compete and fight against each other because of their differences and all that stuff. And mostly because Jin is just obsessed with trying to kill Ragna, and Ragna is just trying not to put up with it. And plus, even the rival theme itself, Under Heaven's Destruction, one of the best musical themes to ever hear when these two are fighting. Number two, Scorpion versus Sub-Zero. Now, when you think of an iconic video game rivalry, let me ask you guys a question. What do you think of when you think of Mortal Kombat? What characters come to your mind? If you answer Scorpion and Sub-Zero and they're fighting, then yes, you are absolutely correct. Because this is hands down still one of the most iconic rivalries to this day. Both characters are the opposite considering that they're both from different clans. They both have different colors of clothes. They both have different powers and abilities. And not to mention that they both have extremely different personalities that kind of bounce off of each other. While Sub-Zero, well, depending on which Sub-Zero you're looking at, I'm going to be looking at the Kwai Liang Sub-Zero, who is a more peaceful and more normal, chill uh, guy who just wants to uh, do what he can to protect his people. And he does want to avenge his brother to some extent, but he does let vengeance be put aside after, like, when Scorpion killed him and all that stuff. But, of course, Scorpion, being the opposite of Sub-Zero, is all about vengeance. Scorpion has spent all of his life in Mortal Kombat constantly trying to avenge his family and his clan because he was to believe that Sub-Zero, or Sub-Zero's older brother, Bihan, was the one responsible for doing all that. Only for Kwai Liang to make things right and basically show him that Quan Chi is the one responsible for that. And not to mention that these two would make peace with each other and they would also grow some respect for each other, especially within their clans, which is very nice. Still, whether uh, doesn't matter how you look at the rivalry, it's still iconic to this day. All right, before we get to my number one pick on the list, as always and as usual, here are my Bowser Jr. Fan 13 Honorable Mentions. Soul Bad Guy vs. Kai Kisuke. One of my favorite rivalries in Guilty Gear, like, I don't know how many rivalries there are in that series, but when it comes to rivalries in that series, Soul and Kai is definitely one of the most iconic. Luigi vs. Waluigi. 
This kind of has the same benefactor as Mario vs. Wario, only you got the sidekicks, the player twos, going at each other's throats. Kitana vs. Melina, two twin sisters that are at each other's throats because they fight over the throne. Well, Melina wants the throne because it's her rightful place, but Kitana basically keeps it from her because she believes to be Outworld's true ruler and the true savior to everyone. And it's pretty cool how they uh, balance that out in Mortal Kombat's story. And to see these two sisters fight against each other is just crazy. And the designs between both of them are just amazing, with Katana being the beautiful one, and Melina being the somewhat beautiful but sort of ugly-ish one. Noelle vs. Subaki. I know not a lot of Blaze Blue fans are gonna agree with me on this one because it's not really considered to be a rivalry that much. I mean, aside from the rival theme, uh, Memory of Tears, which is so iconic and so catchy to listen to, I consider this to still be a good rivalry because these two were best friends and they had respect for each other, but due to some circumstances into the story, they had to go at each other's throats. But they still respect each other uh, nowadays, or at least I hope it is. Red vs. Blue Another iconic Pokemon rivalry, but this one, back in the day, this is hands down the most iconic rivalry next to Ash and Gary, no doubt about it. The Mishima Bloodline Feud. If you want to talk about iconic video game rivalries, you cannot leave out Tekken. Now, this isn't really a one-on-one -on -one rivalry match, it's more of a three-way rivalry match between the three Mishimas. Heihachi Mishima, Kazuya Mishima, and Jin Kazama. The grandfather, the father, and the son, going at each other's throats like there's no tomorrow. Alright, speaking of fighting games, I've saved this one for last because when it comes to iconic rivalries in video games, there is hands down no rivalry that is much better than anyone or any of these. So number one is going to Ryu versus Ken. I consider this to be the perfect rivalry between the two of them. Because you got Ryu and Ken, two characters who back in the day played exactly the same in the earlier days of Street Fighter, except the only differences were their designs. But aside from that, they did end up making Ryu and Ken slightly different from each other as shown further into the games. Well, aside from super moves and extra small differences aside, like, the two's personalities and their story are also different. Ryu is a warrior from Japan, and Ken is from the America, who came to Japan to train with Ryu. And basically, these two are kind of like best friends, more, more than rivals. I mean, they are still considered rivals because oftentimes they would fight against each other, competing against each other for their strengths, and grow stronger because they're kind of like brothers if you think about it. I, you even see in some of the special intros that Ryu and Ken have when they fist bump each other before they get ready to fight and throw their Hadoukens at each other. And I'm gonna be honest, out of all the rivalries that I've just listed on this list, this to me is hands down the most perfect and the most healthiest rival you could rivalry you can ever think of. And it definitely shows that because it's just two best friends competing with each other and helping each other grow strong. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And it's so iconic. I mean, this is one of the biggest uh, selling points of Street Fighter. Seeing Ryu and Ken on the box art dueling with each other. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. So, Ryu and Ken easily hands down the number one best rivalry in video game history. And that is all we have for today, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think of my list? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite video game rivalry. Was there a video game rivalry that I kind of forgot? L please leave it in the comments below and mention it to everyone. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, everyone.